If you've been following my channel, you know that I've been building lots and lots of cabinets and it's all been leading up to this moment. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I took all those cabinets and built this awesome miter saw station. And I'm gonna show you several key organization features that I built into mine that I think you guys are really gonna love. Now I have full build videos and plans available for how I did the upper and lower cabinets. And now I'm gonna show you how I brought it all together. And I'm even gonna show you how I nearly ruined the whole thing. Now let's get started. So before I can install my cabinets, I need to clear this wall. Just Pardon me, this will only take a couple seconds. I'm going to relocate all this lumber to a different part of my shop that's going to make more sense for my workflow. Okay, now onto the cabinets. To install my base cabinets, I'm using shims. Because my shop floors aren't too far out of level, I thought adding leveling feet was just going to be overkill, and besides that fact, I want to add base trim to the bottom of these cabinets when I'm done, so leveling feet would be inaccessible anyways. I tap on the shims, continuously checking it for level, and once that's done, I can screw it to the wall. Now since this wall is cinder block, I'm using Tapcon masonry screws instead of traditional cabinet screws. I have a very short video on how to attach cabinetry to this kind of wall, so if that's your situation, you can go ahead and check out that video next. I'll leave a link in the description. After the cabinet is secured, I trim the excess off the shim so I can add my baseboards later. Okay, for the countertop, I decided to go with 3 quarter inch plywood. And that starts by splitting a sheet of plywood in half lengthwise. I'm going to double this up to make an inch and a half thick counter. Because this is going to be a miter saw station, I'm going to have an 8 foot section of counter to the left of the saw and a 4 foot section on the right. Offsetting the placement of the miter saw like this is going to allow me to cut full 8 foot, 10 foot, or even 12 foot pieces of lumber and have plenty of support. Okay, with all my plywood cut up, I can go ahead and get this centipede out of the way and start building my counters. I'm going to make the counters by sandwiching two pieces of plywood together. To do this, I'm using this special drill bit that both drills the pilot hole and adds a countersink so that the screws sit below the surface of the plywood. It's nice when I get to do two jobs at once. Then I go back and add screws to all those holes. I'm not adding any glue, just screws. I'm worried about the water and the glue warping the plywood, and I'm really not sure how much value the glue actually adds in this case. And then I get to do the same thing with the 8 foot section of the counter. You'll also notice I'm adding reference lines here, which mark the area in the middle of the counter where I do not want to add any screws. I'm going to be adding a dado for T-Track later, and I don't want to plow my router bit into an unfortunately placed screw by accident. And once that's done, I can go ahead and trim the edges square and flush. Because these are shop cabinets, I wanted to go ahead and add some hard maple edge banding to the countertops. This counter is going to see a lot of use and abuse over time, and I want to use something that's going to be able to stand up to that. Plus the maple edge banding is going to match the maple that I use in the doors and drawer fronts. I begin by gluing the ends on first. The end pieces are flush with the sides, I'm not going to bother with mitered corners. I'm using tape and brad nails to hold these in place while the glue dries. Now for the long edges, I'm going to go ahead and clamp those because I don't want brad nail holes on the front edge of my cabinet. Now after the glue dries, I can go ahead and flush up the edges to the countertop using my trim router. I really have a love-hate relationship with this process because it's so easy to do, but it also makes a huge mess. And once that's done, I can trim the ends flush with my track saw. After that, everything gets a sanding to 180 grit so it's nice and smooth, and then I use some wood cleaner to collect any fine dust still left behind. Now I'm not going to add any finish to my countertop, so I'm just going to go ahead and install them. I went ahead and checked to make sure everything was still level, and I found it was almost perfectly level, so I went ahead and added a shim between the countertop and the cabinet to get it just perfect. After that, I go ahead and attach the countertop to the base cabinets with screws. And one interesting part here, I had to drill access holes through the drawer dividers to be able to get my screws driven in. Next, I need to figure out the height to install my saw platform, and to do this, I use my square. I can then attach some cleats to the sides of the cabinets using screws and a level. 
Now one tip here is to install the cleats just a hair below the distance that you measured with your square. That way if you need to make micro adjustments to the height, you have some room to do that. I'll show you how I do that process later. But before I make and install the platform, I need to make grooves in the countertops to add some T-Track. I'm using a long strip of plywood as a guide for my router, which I attach with two-sided tape. Then I can run my router against the guide and make the cut. But it's right here at the end that I make the mistake of all mistakes. Yep, I forgot to raise the bit before I set the router down and I made a huge gouge in my brand new countertop. Ah, so frustrating. But no worries, in the end it's all good. This is a work surface anyways, it's gonna get beat up. So I just get to look at this every time I use the miter saw station as a reminder to never do it again. And you better believe that I was extra careful making the groove in the next counter. After that cut's done, I clean up all the sawdust and I can install my T-Track. These just install with a few small screws. Okay, back to making the platform for the saw. The platform is made the same way as the countertops are made, just two pieces of plywood screwed together with edge banding added to match. On the back side of the platform, I went ahead and cut out a notch to allow for a vacuum hose and a power cord. I did this with my jigsaw and I used a square as a straight edge. I then cut out the majority of the waste with the jigsaw and sanded the curve smooth. Now I can just slide it into place and attach it with screws. Okay, now I can add my new saw and line it up so that the fence of the saw is just in front of the T-tracks. To micro adjust the height, I go ahead and use a straight edge with some playing cards to find out how much I need to raise the saw to be at the same height as the counter. Once I find the right number of playing cards, I can place those playing cards under the feet of the saw before I attach the saw to the platform. Pretty nifty trick, right? Now because I already installed the lower cabinets, getting the upper cabinets installed was easy to do by myself. I made a spacer platform thingy out of plywood which allowed me to position the cabinets right where I wanted them. I have a whole video on how to hang cabinets on center block walls like this, so I'll just give you the quickie version here. But first, a quick check for level just to make sure everything is still level. Okay, first I drill some pilot holes in the wood where I want my screws to go. This is using just a regular drill and drill bit. Then I grab my hammer drill with a masonry bit and I drill a pilot hole into the concrete using the pilot hole in the wood as a guide. And just like the base cabinets, I'm grabbing some Tapcon screws for this job. And I'm also adding a washer for extra hold. I install those screws using my driver. One tip here is to be careful and don't overdrive these because if you strip out the hole, you'll have to find either a bigger screw or start over with a new hole. So if you just stop driving when you see the cabinet suck up flush to the wall, you'll be okay. Now once those screws are in place, I can move my platform thingy over to the other side and repeat that process. I then clean all the concrete dust out of my cabinets. You really don't want to breathe that nasty stuff in. Then I can just install my shelves and put the doors back on. Another tip, if you're taking your doors on and off cabinets, remove them from the door side of the hinge. That way you ensure when they go back on, they're gonna be in the exact position they were in when you took them off. And just like that, my uppers are up. To make the miter saw station truly functional, I need to add some adhesive measuring tape to both the right side and the left side of the saw. I'm placing my measuring tape on the back side of the T-track. And the last little detail to address is to add a stop block for the T-Track. To do this, I glued two pieces of 5 8 inch Baltic birch that I had left over from making my drawers. 3 quarter inch plywood would be okay to use here too. After that's dry, I trim everything to length and width. I'm making two of these stops, one for each side of the miter saw. Next, I cut a notch in the middle to hold a hardwood runner that'll slide in the T-Track. To install the runners, I just add some glue and tap them into place. A clamp will hold everything in place while they dry. The next step is to drill a quarter inch hole in the center of the runner. That hole will be used to hold a T-bolt, but first I need to mark the edges of that bolt. 
I then cut up my lines using a handsaw. I can then pop that out cleanly with a chisel. Now I have a nice recess for the T-bolt. The T-bolt slides in the T-track and when this thing clamps down, it's not going anywhere. And that runner riding in the T-tracks means that this thing will never wander off square. It's rock solid. Eventually I'm gonna go back and make a flip stop version, but I'll save that for later. Now that the miter saw station is built, I need to focus on optimizing all this new storage. To start, I wanted to add some pullout trays. Now these are basically shallow drawers, so I go ahead and get my measurements from my existing drawers first. Now for the bottom of these trays, I'm gonna use three quarter inch plywood, which is gonna make them able to hold a lot of weight in case I wanna store heavier things on them. I then cut some very shallow sides, which are just gonna be high enough to keep everything contained, but still easy to access. My crosscut sled is the perfect tool for making these repeated cuts accurately. Now the sides are just glued on and then I went ahead and added screws for extra strength. Now these screws on the side are gonna be hidden by the drawer slides and I don't have to waste any clamps while I wait for the glue to dry. I can then use those clamps to go ahead and add the front and back of the tray. I won't be adding screws here because those would be visible. Now using quarter inch strips of plywood as spacers, I go ahead and install the drawer slides and then slide the lower tray into place. Now I wanna make sure that I have enough room to add a full gallon of glue to the bottom tray, so I use a gallon of glue to measure how high I need to place my next tray. I then cut a scrap of plywood to that exact height and use that as a spacer to place the upper set of drawer slides. And with the top tray installed, I go ahead and double check my work to make sure that the glue bottle still fits and is easy to access. You can see, I was serious about loading these up with weight. This cabinet is gonna hold all my glue and epoxy. And then the top, I'll keep my tape and applicators. And now I wanna show you my dirty little secret. This is my current fastener drawer. This is like level zero organization. Okay, maybe level one. At least everything's in the same drawer, right? To fix my fastener disaster, I'm using these small snack containers. These are cheap and they're stackable. I just add some labels to let me know what's inside and now everything is nice and tidy and this makes it super easy to take the fastener of choice right to my project and then return it when I'm done. Another thing I want in my new cabinets is a place to organize all my saw blades. I have my ripping blades, my crosscut blades, my combo blades, and my dado stack. To make this organizer, I lay out four blades on a piece of plywood to figure out the spacing I need. I then drill four holes at those locations and add 5 8 inch dowels to each hole. One important step here is to sand each dowel, which slightly reduces the diameter so that your saw blades slide on and off easily without getting stuck. And adding a little paste wax here never hurts. I then add a pair of drawer slides to the back side using a scrap of plywood as a spacer. Next, I add two-sided tape to the back of the drawer slides. I can then attach the organizer to a second sheet of plywood. The tape is going to hold the slides right in place while I screw them in. This way, the two sides of the drawer slides will always match up perfectly. I can then screw the stationary piece of the plywood into the side of the cabinet and then add my organizer easy peasy. Then I can begin loading it up with every blade I own. I did go back and add a handle at the end to make it easier to pull it in and out. And for the bottom of the cabinets, I added some half inch baseboard to clean up the look. I just used brad nails to fasten the baseboards to the cabinets. Whew, well, that was a lot of work, but it's all done and I absolutely love this miter saw station. This is by far the biggest investment I've ever made in my shop organization, and I hope that I've inspired you to do the same thing in yours. Now, if you wanna go back and watch the videos on how I built the upper and lower cabinets here, I've got those videos floating around here. And until next time, guys, have fun in the shop.